Okay, everyone, we're going to make a start. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Today's webinar is called Board View, how to create a bulletproof agency with your board meetings. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Paul Barnes and I'm the Managing Director of My Accounts Place. My Accounts Place service uh, digital creative agencies specifically, and we provide a full finance function on a outsourced basis to lots and lots of digital creative agencies around Manchester and beyond. Uh, there's a little picture of me with my wife Penny, and my little boy Benjamin. Um, I guess just to show that that's the reason that I'm doing what I do and why I set up my account space was to give me the lifestyle that I want and to give my family what they want. And what, what really drives me and what I'm passionate about is helping business owners, specifically agency owners like you, to do the same. And often you lose sight of that when you are several years into running a business and you forget that the reason you set all this up in the first place was to give you the life that you want and deserve for all the hard work you put in. We get very drawn into giving our clients and our staff the lives that we want, but ultimately the business was set up to serve you. And that's what I'm on a mission, is to help agency owners to start to get what they wanted when they first set up in the business and get their vision back on track. Um, that being said, I love giving great careers to people and I love our team coming in to work and enjoying what they do on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. And we've, we've built a great little team here now. That's us all getting ready for our Christmas due last month. We had a good time at Roxy Ballroom. I got severely beaten by several members of the staff at pool and table tennis. Um, so here we go, let's get going with the webinar. So um, today's webinar is about running board meetings, which may sound boring, and if it does sound boring, that might be because your board meetings have been boring, but after today, I promise that you'll have everything you need to know to run far more effective board meetings. What you'll learn on this webinar is why most board meetings uh, don't work. So if you feel like you're constantly trying to run any board meeting, but particularly board meetings and leaving feeling very frustrated, then you're not the only one. That's how most small business board meetings um, are. And often business owners end up giving up on running board meetings at all because they're not getting what they want out of them. But I promise you that the most successful businesses in the world definitely all run board meetings consistently on a regular basis. And the difference is that they know how to do them right. So today we're going to discover how to get everyone properly prepared for the meeting, so yourself and your team, and how to set the right agenda for a board meeting. So you'll have the framework of actually how you go about setting the right agenda so that you're not going off track. We're going to fundamentally learn how to set the right actions off the back of the board meeting, because the only point in having any meeting is to agree what you're going to do. The only point in having a meeting is to agree between you what it is that you're going to do to move your business forward. And today we're going to discover the four key areas that you should be covering within the board meetings, so what the actual topics are. So why I decided to put this on, um, as I said before, there are good meetings and there are bad board meetings. Often people blame the fact that, um, that the board meeting in itself is the problem and it's not, it's the way that they run. And if you, um, if you're like me, you'll have left board meetings before feeling very frustrated and very flat, and very disappointed at, at the, at the way that they've, uh, that they've panned out compared to how you envisaged it. Um, but I've also left board meetings, uh, particularly in the last six to 12 months, feeling inspired, feeling confident, and feeling like I can be ambitious about where my business is going. And what's been really satisfying is seeing our clients get to that level as well. Um, board meetings done right will give you impetus, they'll make you execute, they will make you, they will help your business to drive forward and for you to start to achieve your vision again that you set out at the start. Um, what I would like to, to say, and this is really important, is that this isn't a, a quick fix, this takes time. And what the most successful business owners do is to stick with the process. Don't give up uh, early. Um, I've worked hard and our clients have worked hard to develop this framework. Um, I don't want you to learn the hard way like I did. Uh, follow this process and you'll quickly get up to a point where these are very, very uh, productive meetings for you. So why I often see that uh, board meetings don't work well, I believe is that many small business owners, and I don't mean to be patronized by calling uh, small business owners, but I'm certainly a small business owner. Um, anyone running you know, sub 10 million pound uh, agencies, often you've not worked in a corporate environment before. Or if you have worked in a corporate environment, you've not been involved in the board meetings. Or 
you have been involved in uh, good board meetings before, but your team haven't. So the other people around your board table don't necessarily know how those meetings need to be run. And so you're left turning up to um, meeting every month with people not having delivered on their action points, coming up with excuses, and you're left feeling very frustrated. So um, uh, some of the things that you'll be experiencing is, you know, you spend the lead up to the board meeting feeling excited about being able to put your imprint on the business and where it needs to go. But you find that the other people around the room are not as enthusiastic as you. They're turning up late, they're turning up unprepared. They've not done any preparation for the agenda items that they need to be involved in. And they're not focused during the meeting. They're looking at the phone, they're checking their emails. I've experienced all this before. They're going into cuckoo land. They're not listening to what you're saying. And it's very, very frustrating. Um, and the problem is that um, no one's necessarily shown you how to do it right, or you know how to do it right, but no one's necessarily shown your team how this needs to be done right. And that's what I'm looking to solve for you today. Just want people to just think about this for a minute, which is, and this is a very important message to get across to your team. When your team are coming into a board meeting, typically from experience, a board meeting should take up to about four hours to cover everything that you need to cover. And it is slightly different for small businesses because just the nature of it is, is different than if you were working in a big company. And there are things that need to be covered off in the board meeting that maybe wouldn't make it onto the agenda for a large company. For a company like mine and, and certainly sub 10 million pound agencies, there's, there's a lot to cover um, in that one meeting a month. So you're probably gonna need something like four hours. If you've got four people, as an example, in that board meeting, that's 16 working hours, two full working days going into that meeting. If you think you're charging £200 an hour, you know, you're going to have some um, directors, uh, some, some highly paid directors in that board meeting capable of earning a couple of hundred pounds an hour at least. Um, that's equivalent to a £3,200 project. So you're effectively waving goodbye to £3,200 by walking into that board meeting you better make sure it's effective. Otherwise, you're not gonna stick to them for long because you might as well spend that time doing some work. And the alternative, you make it work well, they're worth far more than 3,200 pound, um, and you can really start to move your business forward and execute on the things that you need to do. So how you get your team prepared, um, you need to make sure that you're producing a WWW document. I'll come on to what WWW means soon. Um, but you need to make sure that you, you're creating that document at the back of the meeting and, and that people know what they need to do to, to um, before the meeting. You need to be setting an agenda a couple of weeks in advance. Um, when I work with my mentor, we actually rehearse the agenda about a week before the board meeting. So we sit together and we talk through everything that we want to address, how long we want it to take, what outcomes that we want, so that we're very well prepared for that and we send that agenda out to the rest of the team once we're happy with it. And then the behaviours, you know, how do you get the right behaviours from the people around the room? to stay focused and stay engaged, remembering that if they're not focused and engaged, they might as well be out there doing work. And if that's what they'd rather do, then they probably shouldn't be in your board meetings. Um, but just reminding them that the true cost of what's going into running this board meeting. So WWW stands for who, it stands for what, and it stands for when. If you're not producing an action list off the back of a board meeting, you've just wasted a whole load of time two working days in that last example where you'll have talked about stuff and you know you might have even been excited and passionate engaged but without this the, the the board meeting has been almost useless good in that it gives everybody a chance to vent their vent their feelings and talk but you know you can do that in the pub you can do that after hours you can do that on an informed basis the whole point of a board meeting is to agree who's going to do what and when they're going to do it you have one person accountable for every uh, for every action point. So whatever whatever the what is, the action point, only one person can be accountable for that action point because in the next board meeting, they're going to tell you how they got on and the fact that they've completed it. And when is exactly, when is it going to be complete? Is it just in time for the next board meeting? Is it tomorrow? Or is it next quarter? You know, is it actually something that agreed needs to be done, but it's not urgent? So when is that going to be done? And then it's up, for the, up to those people then to take their own, actions from the www document and to put them into whatever project management task management calendar piece of paper whatever it is that they use to manage their day but they need to take responsibility for anything with their name by it 
the who, what, when should be distributed by one person within 48 hours after the meeting. I find that this works well if you've got somebody external involved in the board meetings. So if you've got a non-exec or a, a chairman, a consultant, management consultant, or if you've got a finance director, someone who's good at uh, taking action and being organized, but this is, a, this is not a secretarial job. This is not an admin job. This is not just typing up minutes and listen to what people said. This is, somebody who can interpret what the actual substance of the action point is. So it's not just a lot of things listed out for the sake of it, that people aren't going to remember what it meant afterwards. It's someone who can actually challenge you during the meeting and just confirm what the action points are that need to be taken and then write them up in a very clear document afterwards so that everyone knows exactly what they need to do and you're not wasting time doing the wrong things. So it's somebody who's got the knack to be able to understand what those action points are and to distribute them shortly after the meeting whilst it's fresh in everyone's mind. So if there are any questions, they can come back to you. So for, so for me, I started working with a mentor about two years ago. A year ago, he became a non-exec on our board. Um, Michael sits in on those board meetings. He's constantly challenging us throughout the meeting. He's asking us to clarify what it is that we're agreeing to do and who's going to do it so that he can produce this document on the back of it. Behaviours, so they remember the 3,200 um, pound project strategy any project would have a deadline so the deadline for your board meeting is the end time of the meeting if the meeting's down for 11 till 12 then it finishes at 12 therefore we need to stay focused what will often happen is you'll you'll get sidetracked on the very first part of the agenda because um, everyone's trying to make their imprint on the meeting um, you get in carried away with all sorts of different ideas that spin off that first thing on the agenda, but it's very important that you stick to the agenda and that you have times next to each section on the agenda, which we're gonna come on to those sections shortly, there's four of them. Um, that you complete the specification. So if you had a project, you would complete it to the specification. The specification is the agenda, which will have been written in advance. Everything on that agenda needs to be covered. And, and most importantly, that you've got very clear action points off the back of it. So with the agenda itself, there are four areas that you uh, need to cover. It's not that you, if it's a four hour meeting, you need to put an hour necessarily to each of these. In the preparation for the board meeting, you would decide by looking through the agenda, the number of things that are under each of these items, how much time that it needs. But I suggest your board meeting needs to be no more than four hours, no less than three, in order for you to get the most value out of it. But you wanna be talking about finance, so, you know, what are the KPIs that, that are showing up? Are we getting the outcomes that the business needs? And very importantly, you need as a business owner to get the lifestyle that you want from the business. Um, strategy, you will have set um, a three, five year strategy, which I'm gonna come on to shortly, but you should be addressing that every single month in your board meeting, challenging whether that's still the strategy or whether anything needs to change. Execution, how you actually go and implement um, the things that um, you've decided that you want to do. So operate, uh, typically things fall under two categories. The only purpose of your business uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is to bring more clients in or deliver more value to the clients that you've got. So you call that whatever you want, marketing and operations, um, it doesn't matter, but your execution is all about how you get more clients in, how you deliver more value to the clients that you've got. Obviously, all of that requires great people, um, motivated and highly engaged and that's why people is a section of, of its own because it's the biggest cost in your, in your business the biggest investment and always also the biggest opportunity for you to be able to um, leverage your business and get the results that you want so from a financial perspective you want to be reporting on the high level three uh, core reports which is your profit and loss account your balance sheet your cash flow forecast your profit and loss account will tell you about the financial performance of the business since you last met, so probably the last month. Um, it will tell you um, what your projected profit and loss is for the year. So at the start of the year, you should have set a budget. And partway through the year, you should know what your actuals are to date and what your projections are to the end of the year so that you can see whether you're on track to hit that budget or whether you need to do something uh, to get back on track. Your balance sheet will tell you how much of that profit you've been able to retain in the business. Um, make sure that you're building up the, the value uh, of the business and the cash flow will make sure that you've got enough cash to service it all. 
they're what I call high level financial indicators, but you have more detailed management accounting indicators that drive those financial results. Everything that I've talked about up there is historical. You know, uh, that the profit or loss has already been made, that the reserves have already been retained or lost in the business. Um, and the cash flow is a, as a result of decisions that are already made. These management accounting indicators will give you more clarity on what those financial results are about to be. Because if you're not generating a healthy revenue per head for your team, you're not going to make the profit that you need. If your projects are not profitable, you're not going to make the profit that you need. And if your team and your staff are not profitable, you're not going to make the profit that you need. But it allows you to break down to see where the cracks are and where it is that you're leaking profit in your business. So that would be the first section that you would cover um, in the board meeting. Be very careful not to let this overrun. Um, ideally, you would have a finance person in that meeting. Um, so, so someone who's able to answer the questions that inevitably come up and that is ready and prepared to answer those questions so that you're not going off spending uh, lots of time going in, going into different documents and, and wasting time that stop you from getting through the rest of the meeting. So um, those of you who are clients will know that we, we provide a service like this. We can come into your board meetings um, but if it's not us, you know, ideally you want a finance person in there ready to own this part of the agenda. Keep you moving. Strategy. So this is something that you will have uh, set as a business previously, but as a business of any size, you need to be changing your strategy on a month to month basis, because if you're not, you know, things could quickly change and the things that you are implementing and executing in your business um, might be taking you away from the strategy. So we need to always pull back to what is the strategy? What is the vision? What is it that we're trying to achieve? Because otherwise we will make the wrong decisions. Who, who are our core customers? Or who do we want them to be? Where are our customers? Where do we want them to be? What services is it that you're going to provide to those customers? And what I want you to ask, and what I want you to answer whenever you, whenever you ask, ask yourself these questions and who are, and therefore who are not our customers. So if our customers are digital creative agencies, then that means our customers are also not hairdressers, taxi drivers, builders, property developers. Um, you're being really clear by being clear on who you are. You're also being clear on, on what you're not. And that just makes everything else easier in the business. What services do you want to offer again? And what services do you therefore not offer? You can't be the best at everything. So what is it that you're going to do and what is it you're not going to do? And all of this just makes decision making so much easier. What are your brand promises? So this, this here is your blueprint for setting a strategy. Any successful business will have a brand promise because all the people that you're marketing to, all the people that you're selling to, they're skeptical, they've been let down before, and there's an element of uncertainty that you're going to deliver um, this great service that you say you're going to deliver. So what are the actual promises? What are the things that you can hold your hat on that you're going to deliver to that client? And importantly, what is the guarantee if you don't? Because if your customers are spending a lot of money with you, why is it that they have to take the risk that you deliver? You should be putting a guarantee in place to reverse that risk onto you so that if you let them down, then it's you that suffers, not just them. So what's the money back guarantee? What's the, you know, what is it? What is it you're gonna do if you, if you don't deliver on the promises that you said otherwise? If you're not putting a guarantee in place that you're gonna to stick to that's gonna cost you money, then it's not a promise. And then this is one that I really like and has been really powerful for us, which is the one phrase strategy. The one phrase strategy is the, is the thing that rolls off the tongue that all your staff need to be able to know that distinguishes who you are as a business. What is it that you aspire to be? What is it you're trying to be? Because you've got to start saying it and rehearsing it and talking about it long before you get there um, because of that idea of, of self, self-fulfilling prophecy. And if you talk about it and you live and breathe that strategy, then it can, it's much more likely to start to become real. And then what are your differentiating activities? So what are the things that differentiate you from your competitors? What are the methodologies that you follow that give you an unfair competitive advantage? Being in business isn't just about competing and surviving. It's about dominating your market. It's about being far better than your competitors can be. And if you can find something that's, that differentiates you, whether it's a system that you, the, the system and processes that you use, or it's the way that you market to your clients or, 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 or 
specifically the services that you give them that no one else does? What's the thing where it's not easy for anyone else to replicate the way that you do it? So this is um, how your strategy can be laid out. Um, this is um, what our wonderful marketing manager Beth has designed. Obviously, you can produce your own version, uh, but this is this is where we've laid out our strategy. So you want to know who your core customers are. Uh, that's specifically um, who you actually work with right now. So who, who are your main main clients now? Uh, what services do you provide? What are your brand promises, and what are the KPIs that tell you whether you are delivering on those brand promises? So if your brand promise is um, about always having efficient turnaround time of work, what's the KPI that tells you whether you are being efficient? Uh, your brand promise guarantee, your one phase strategy, differentiating activities, and then your X factor for growth. So what's the thing that, um, that that's, that's gonna give you confidence that you have found something that gives you that X factor that over the long term um, and, and this is the one I guess that you keep behind the scenes as well. You differentiate in activities, you might market about the fact that you do something different, but your X factor is the thing that you keep behind closed doors. So what's the thing that's actually um, your secret recipe that you don't want to share with the competition and you don't want to market? Um, and then your BHAG. So BHAG stands for Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal. So what's the long-term goal that you're trying to achieve? Might be 10, 20, 30 years away, but what is it that you're trying to be? Keeps everyone focused. Your vision is about setting your core values. Uh, everyone talks about core values, but there's a reason that everyone talks about them. They are the things that drive the behaviors in your business on a day-to-day -day basis. So what are the things that if your staff aren't following, you would fire them over? What are the things that if a potential new recruit isn't demonstrating, you would not hire them over? And what are the things that you would recognize and reward your team for delivering on? The things that are true to your heart, you know, no employee ever cares as much as you do and no employee ever gets it as much as you do. And there's a reason for that. And that's because they're not business owners and you are. So the reason you've got where you are is because you're hugely passionate about what you do. You're talented, you're smart. And it's always about trying to pull your employees as close to that as possible, but knowing that will never quite be there. But the core values are where you lay out how you expect everybody to carry themselves on a day-to-day basis to get close to the level that you would if you were servicing all your clients yourself, which obviously isn't possible and you can't scale a business that way. So you set your core values to make sure that people are getting as close to that as possible. What's your purpose? So why are you in business? So the only reason I'm in business is to um, build highly successful digital agencies. Um, that's the only that's the only reason for our existence. It's it's all we want to do. If we're not delivering on that, then we're not achieving our purpose. Everything else is support, um, is uh, administrative. It, it's all revolved around us achieving the purpose to help our clients to build highly successful agencies. And then once you've set, once you've laid out your um, strategy you need to you need to lay out strategic priorities so you know what you want to be you know what your purpose is you know what your how your staff need to behave um, what your values are and you know what your 10 20 30 year um, plan is or, or what it is you want to achieve you need to now break that down into a three to five year plan so what where is it you want to be in three to five years therefore what do you need to be doing um, in the in this year so this year is broken down from quarters two, three, and four. So, so what we're going to do in quarters two, three, and four, and then quarter one. So we're all the way back now to what is it we're doing in the next 90 days that's going to drive us towards achieving our goals this year, that's going to drive us towards achieving our three to five year goals. And um, it's in that, setting that 90 days for me is the key. Because if you set a five year plan, it's, it's so far away that your staff never really engage with what that plan is. If you set a 90 day plan, it's like we need to start taking action tomorrow because after tomorrow we'll be one ninetieth of the way there and those days will quickly fly by and obviously you've got weekends and everything else. So if it's a 90 day plan, you need to start taking action straight away and that's the beauty of this. But the other great thing about this is that you can start to give, give your 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 key actions and your key themes you can start to give them a home so if 
if if there's something you, f you feel like niggling your head and you know you should be doing it and you're not doing it yet, but you can see it listed on quarter two to four, then you can kind of relax knowing that it is going to be captured. It's going to be captured next quarter. That's not part of the goals for this quarter. If it's not on here, that's when you start to feel overwhelmed. You start to feel stressed that you're not doing everything that you need to do because you've not actually shown yourself when it is that you're going to um, achieve those goals. So... Once you've got your strategy in place, you've got all your financial KPIs telling you um, whether you're on track or not, it's, it's, it's time to execute. Um, this is where most businesses are weak. Um, we can talk about strategy, we can set strategy, but business owners are very guilty of moving from one thing to the next to the next without fully implementing the thing that they've said they're gonna do. And this is why it's very important to have board meetings and this is why it's very important to have action points at the end of it because then you're all accountable to one another to achieving those action points and if you just achieved the action points that you set at your board meeting you will be incredibly further along in a month's time promise i promise you all the things that you set on that board meeting will be that ambitious so if you can achieve all of those in a month you will be in a, in a far stronger place in a month's time when you get to your next board meeting it starts with understanding what the quarterly themes are. You can't achieve everything in the 90 days. So the main thing is to make the main thing the main thing. What is the number one key thrust that's going to drive your business forward in the next 90 days? And that isn't things like drive down efficiency or um, win a couple of clients or sort out a staff problem. They're all day-to-day -day management. They're the things that should be happening every day anyway. Your quarterly theme is what actually elevates you beyond your goals, not the things that just enable you to get by and survive, but the things that actually enable you to thrive. If you have four strong quarterly themes in a year that really drive your business forward, this is things like introducing a new service and actually selling it successfully or hiring that real key member of staff that's going to make the difference to your business or it's, it's, ramping up something that you've been servicing for a while but you've not really been doing it well it's what's going to enable you to not just plod along but to actually evolve and develop as a business um, and that becomes your quarterly theme once you've got your quarterly theme you need to make sure that everyone understands the role that they play specifically in that, that quarterly theme and what the kpis are to keep those on track so i like to call them scoreboards you want scoreboards everywhere you want scoreboards for the business for the company overall you want them broken down by department or teams and you want each individual person to have their own scoreboards so what are the objectives you want you want them to achieve in the next quarter and what are the kpis that will tell you whether they are being successful in achieving those objectives and then you need regular meeting rhythms now again people often say that meetings waste time that they pull you away from doing the things that you should be focused on but it's not the meeting that's the problem it's the way that they run Meetings are really important for keeping everyone on track and for getting things done, for addressing challenges and for, mo and for moving things forward. So I recommend you have your, you have, um, sometimes this will be right, sometimes it won't, but to think about having daily huddles for each team so they can be talking about any problems they've got, what they're planning on doing that day, how they got on yesterday. You can be having, you should be having weekly team meetings where everyone comes together and you look at what the, what, what, what are the scores, you know, what you're expecting those scores to be at the end of the month, because there's no point in waiting at the end of the month and thinking, oh gosh, I failed on, on, on achieving my KPI. Talk about it every week, um, have a weekly team meeting, and then on the fourth team meeting of the month, you look at the actual results. So for three weeks, you're saying what you think they're gonna be, what you project they're gonna be, any challenges that you've got, anything else that you need to be doing, any help, any support that you need, so that by the end of the month, there's no doubt that you're going to hit those goals because you're talking about it on a weekly basis. Then you have your board meetings every month. Um, that would be your leadership team, your directors, your board of directors. And then you might want to do something like a quarterly, a biannually or an annual um, away day or a couple of away days where you get away ideally with someone, again, that's uh, not involved in the business day to day. So a consulting company or a, a non-exec someone that can um, get you away from the business and just think again about the big picture and make sure that you're getting your strategy right. And then obviously in order for all this to work, you need your people to be engaged. You need your people to be motivated. You need them to be recognized and fulfilled. Um, and therefore you need to work on your people. You need to work on getting the right people. You need to work on their um, development 
and you need to help them because um, again, we're as business owners, you know, we're, we're naturally uh, motivated and engaged to drive the business forward. This, at the end of the day, this isn't their business and they need guidance on what it is that you need from them in order to, to achieve the goals that you want to achieve as a business owner. So I have no shame in using the word appraisal. People would start to be negative about the idea of uh, running appraisals because they're associated with um, turning people off, they're associated with um, pay, which may or may not be um, uh, may or may not be the case. You know, there might not be any pay rises available. There may be, that's fine. But the appraisal process is where it's a two-way conversation. It's where the employee sits with you or sits with another one of the directors or their, their line manager and talks about how they think they've performed. It's not just how you think they've performed, but how they think they've performed and what, what skills and what development they need um, to, to get to where you need them to be. It's where you set goals and objectives so that everyone's really clear on what success looks like. It's not fair for you to call a member of staffing after a, a year of not having any meetings and no guidance and say, I'm disappointed how you've done this year because if you've not set the plan out in advance, then how on earth are they going to know what good performance looks like? So um, an annual appraisal document, I can share this stuff with you, by the way, I've, I've not got it ready for this webinar, but um, let me know if you want me to share our appraisal documents that we use. You set it for an annual basis and you meet with the employees every quarter to make sure that they're on track to, to hit their goals. Function accountability. So this has been a real key element of um, our success and us achieving our results and for a number of our clients as well. And it's this idea that if you had a big company, you would have managing director, a marketing director, a business development director, an HR director, an IT director, an operations director, finance director. As a small business, of course, you, you haven't got that kind of resource and it wouldn't make sense to have all those people. But those functions still need to have ownership. They need to have one owner who's responsible for making sure that they deliver. So sales and marketing need to need to work, need to be on track, need to evolve. Finance needs to do people into it, et cetera. And what you can do is you can give accountability to different people. As you start to scale your agency, you can give accountability to people without it being their full-time role. A great tip I've got for this is to make sure that you you put people on trial. So you assign the most appropriate person for each area. So if you think somebody is really strong on, uh, on process and on um, getting work done, then you might make those uh, them accountable for the operations function. But what you say is that this is a, this is a six month thing. We're going to try it. I'm going to help and going to support you. But if we're not getting the results that we need on our, on our operations, if we're not getting, if they are not achieving our KPIs by the end of it, then we'll consider who might be better fit for the role. And that's, you know, perfectly acceptable because you, the whole point of doing this is to achieve results. And it's very, very important. It's essential that a business achieves its results. You have to put an end date on it and then review the people that you've got doing that. So function accountability, that's about how you make people accountable for a function delivering the results that you need. Process accountability is slightly different. So where the function accountability might say that you know, we need to deliver projects on time, the process accountability person for operations would say, these are, the, these are the processes that we need to follow to deliver a project on time. And they'll be responsible for developing, improving and challenging those processes to make sure that they give you the best chance of delivering on time and creating a fantastic client experience. So whereas the function accountability, uh, that's about being responsible for the outcomes, the process accountability is the processes that are followed and owning that process and that, that system that holds the process um, to, to deliver. You need an organizational chart. So every business owner should have their chart of not just what their organization looks like now, but what it looks like when it's complete. You know, what does it look like in three, five, 10, 20 years? And you can draw that out now. Um, draw, draw out, you, you come to chat with all the, all the positions that need to be filled. And some of those positions will be vacant, but they'll be being filled by you. Or they'll be getting filled by, one member of staff will be filling two or three positions. That's okay. You put their names on the positions because they still need somebody responsible for them. But over time, you start to recruit people to be full-time in, in each of those roles. So draw up your organizational chart and include all the roles that you want to fill in the future. 
And then back to core values again. So this shows up again in the people section because it's so important. It's useless having core values if they are sat on a, on a folder in Google Drive or in Dropbox or even if they're on your wall. Um, it doesn't mean anything if your people aren't able to repeat back the core values to you, if they are not um, demonstrating them day to day and if they're not pulling each other up when they're not following those core values. So make sure those core values are living and breathing in your business every day. Um, if you have things like employee of the month, or if you, you know, if you're recognizing people associated back to the core values that become a real living, breathing thing, and it takes time for this to work, do not give up on the process. Every successful business has core values. Um, keep at it, keep hammering home the message and don't get frustrated knowing that it takes time for it to start to yield results. A really good uh, little quote which I like about managing people from um, Vern Harnish, who wrote uh, Scaling Up, fantastic book if, you, if you've not read it. Um, he wrote, uh, he said the quote, which is, uh, business owners talk about motivating the staff. Um, actually what they're doing a lot of the time is they're demotivating the staff. So you, there's an argument you can't necessarily motivate people. You, you hire motivated people. They're either motivated in their nature or not. But business owners are guilty of demotivating the staff by making things such hard work. They create so much admin and so many wasted chores that are actually not relevant, certainly not relevant to, to, to achieving your, your short-term goals, your 90-day goals. Work with your people on how you can de-hassle all the clutter to make it as simple as possible for them to achieve their goals. So... A quick recap. Um, today, you should have so far understood why board meetings don't work. And it's not just you. Most of them don't, don't work. That's often because people aren't following a framework. But it's also because people give up when they're not working instead of believing in the process and sticking to it. Instead of looking to the next shiny new um, board meeting framework, just choose one. You know, if it's this one, great. If it's another one, fine. But just make sure you... You pick a process and you stick with it and believe in the process and don't waste energy rewriting a new process when you just need to get people into rhythms, into routines and getting used to a process. And it will not work right first time, won't work right second time, but it'll get better all the time if you persevere. You've discovered how to get everyone properly prepared for the meeting by um, seeing the agenda a couple of weeks in advance and by um, setting the action points off the back of it. You've learned how to set that right agenda. So the four elements of the agenda, um, finance, strategy, people, and execution. After this webinar, you will receive an email with um, some documents on, so, so the actual uh, document to use in the meeting to set, set the agenda, so you'll, so you'll get that. Um, you will also get the document for the who, what, and when. So I don't care what system you use, don't waste loads of time on the system. If you need pen and paper at the start or a word document or a google sheet it doesn't matter just use something to track the who what and when it's up to other people to then put that into their whatever task system they use if you then add a system later down the line great but don't make it hard for yourself by trying to learn a new system as well as learning this new framework just get the framework in in place it doesn't matter if it's pen and paper or what it is and you also discovered uh, what the four key areas should be covering within your board meetings are so as I say, one more time, stick with the process because it won't work the first time. I've run board meetings since I set up the business four and a half years ago and they were not very good at the start. They are very, very good now. I was left feeling flat um, at the start, disorganized, like I'd wasted time. And now I leave them feeling very confident about the future, um, ambitious, and like we've got a plan that we are going to hit and it will help us to achieve our goals and it's yielding results. But it was a long time in the making and the process that we've put together now, we've been following consistently for several months and I'm really happy that now it's, it's given us what we need. So don't learn the hard way like I did and um, trying to reinvent the wheel. Here's the framework. Here's the process for you. Follow it by all means. Let me know how you get on. Let me know if you're having challenges still during the board meeting or any bits that you're not sure on that, that, that are causing you uh, problems. And I'll, 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 I'm sure I'll be able to help to guide you to get, get them back on track, but just don't give up on the process. Um, what's next? So we're putting an event on at the end of January to go through 
some of this in more detail and to keep, keep you in the right um, mindset. It's at um, home, which is a lovely uh, venue on First Street in Manchester. It's 12 till five, so we'll put some food on about 12 o'clock and we'll, we'll start the event at one. I'll be talking about uh, the key financial metrics that you should be tracking for your agency. I'll talk to you about how you track those financial metrics and I'll talk to you about what they should look like, so what sort of results you should be getting based on all the experience that we've got working with other agency owners. Michael will then talk about how you set a vision and strategy. It's actually going to put you in a position to achieve those results. Um, so going into more detail about some of the stuff I've shared today. And then James um, will talk about the, the, the sales and marketing strategies that you can uh, implement. The stuff that James shares is absolutely brilliant. And what I really love about James' stuff is it's proven. Um, it's proven for all businesses we work with, including ours. But, but what, what, what I really like about his stuff is it's very simple. So you can go away and implement it right away using simple technology. It doesn't complicate anything. He makes it very, very straightforward what you need to, to go and do so you don't waste time on, um, on, on technology. Quite frankly, you know, you, you, you get on with using simple technology and simple systems that make this stuff work. And then finally, we've got David Crawford. So David managed a, a digital team of over 100 people at McCann's. He's been managing director of several agencies and he's been through all the pain barriers that you've been through in getting your team to deliver efficiently and effectively. And he'll share his advice and his thoughts on, um, on, on how you do that, which obviously ties into everything else. But once you've got your metrics, you know what you want to achieve, your strategy for how you're going to achieve it, sales and marketing for bringing in the right clients, it's then about delivering effectively. And that's what David will help you to do. So uh, we'll send you all the details of that after the webinar if you want to come along. Um, finally, I would just like to uh, let you know that, that my contact details. So by, by all means, reach out. Um, if you enjoyed the webinar, please tweet about it. Um, I'd be very grateful because it enables us to be able to help more people and we can send some recordings to anyone who wasn't here today. Um, but if any of you have any questions, I am more than happy to take them. Um, let me know anything that maybe I went over too fast or didn't make sense during the webinar uh, or anything else that you would like advice on because I am all yours for the next 15 minutes. Details of, um, of the event and the, and the booking link will be sent over uh, via email later today. So you'll be able to um, register your interest if you want to come to that event. There are, everyone says this, but there are limited spaces because we're only having 28 people um, at that event. So, um, you know, if there's anything you're unsure about, if you need more information after you receive the booking, booking link, just let us know. Um, are there any questions from any of you about uh, anything that we shared today or anything else? Thanks, John. That's great. I'm glad to, glad to hear that's really good. Well done for all your recent successes. I've been following you with, with interest. Uh, can you give me some info about one of your team attending a meeting? Uh, who's that? Dave. Hi, Dave. Yeah, so um, the setup at my account's place is we have four FDs, we have four FCs, and we have four bookkeepers. So the FDs are responsible for helping you to improve your numbers. They're responsible for um, helping business to achieve its financial goals, planning, forecasting, budgeting, that, that kind of thing, and also representing um, representing you as your finance director at board meetings. So each of our FDs spends time um, doing that with their clients. Um, we can do that um, for existing clients. Um, we can do it if you're not a client. Obviously, it's easier if we've got a handle on your numbers. But if you just want us to do that bit in isolation, then we can have a chat about that. Um, but the idea is, is, is that you, you hire them for their time. So it's, it's £100 an hour. So if it's a four-hour board meeting, it's £400 um, for one of our FDs to, to come along and deliver the finance slot at your board meeting. So let us know if that's something you're interested in. Um, for existing clients, they can just add that on to, to their package with us. Yes, John, it would be good to catch up soon. I'd love that. That'd be great. I'll uh, drop you an email after the event. 
Just write that down. Can I get a copy of his staff appraisal form? Uh, of course you can, Chris, yeah. Um, trying to think the best way to do that. What do you think best, best set up set with me now? So it's probably too late for that to go in the email, is it? Um, yes, the email's all to yeah. go straight away. Um, yeah. But I can send that along to you if you pass me those details. Yeah, if you, um, if you could drop an email to me. Oh, in fact, we've got your email. So Chris, I've, I've got your details now. And we'll send over that staff appraisal forms. Sounds good. We need to have a senior along to kick our asses. Yeah, he's very good at that bit. He gets lots of praise for his ass kicking. I would also like to copy the appraisal form. Yeah, I'm just thinking, Beth, that it might be best for us to make it publicly available. Because there's going to be lots of people that want those appraisal forms. So we'll just make those available uh, on social media as well as sending them to Chris and Caroline. Uh, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Nazir. Thank you all for coming, coming along today. You know, I know it's not easy during work hours to invest this sort of time, but um, hopefully it's been really useful. Thanks, Caroline, Chris, Dave, John, John, Joseph, Ken, Nazir, Sam. The, the idea of the event at the end of the month, by the way, is it, it's always education. All the events my account's place run will always be educational. We won't run networking events for the sake of networking and wasting time. Obviously, there'll be opportunity for you to meet other agency owners there and, and to talk to them and um, share ideas and thoughts with them. Um, that, that's always part part of the events that we do but it'll be educational you've got four guest speakers going into real detail about how you can go away and implement um, a, a plan to start running board meetings more effectively but you know that goes beyond the board meetings into the actual execution of how you put all this stuff into practice as well so we'll be sharing real world examples and um, I know that it's, it's going to be really valuable we want the right people there so if, if you know any other agency owners sort of five to 60 people um, would, would love to know about them and if you want to bring a member of your team along just get in touch with us um, by default we only we set it as only one person per company but if you'd like to bring someone along then just get in touch I'm sure we can make that happen okay looks like we're about done for questions so I'm gonna sign out thank you everyone who was here today um, reach out on social media if I can help and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks guys.